Hello and welcome. How much is a lack of foreign reporting hurting America's media? And more importantly, keeping the public of the world superpower ignorant. U.S. news outlets have continually shut down their bureaus around the globe as budgets for international coverage shrinks, and the results are painfully visible. There's much debate about the devolution of American media into junk news and tabloidism as media conglomerates feel massive pressure to turn huge profits, which has created an obsession with ratings and an infatuation with glitz over substance. At the same time, the recession has caused many media companies to shut down their offices abroad, which also means less international news on American airwaves. The one area that's proving to be a saving grace for journalism with some depth is the Internet, where websites are becoming a more valuable primary source of news, including international stories, for people worldwide. Today we ask, are the American media failing their public, and what are they doing to the country's perceptions of the rest of the world? Yeah, foreign reporting in, uh, uh, in the American media is in decline. Uh, what, what do you feel is the bigger reason? Is it simply budget cuts, or is it that it's just driven by a lack of interest in international news by the American public? Oh, no, I think it works the other way around, Riz. I think if there isn't information about what's happening in the rest of the world, then if people don't know, they can't act. It is absolutely critical now, though more than ever, when you have the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the drone attacks in Pakistan, when you have the attacks in Yemen, the U.S. involvement in Somalia, this is a time we have to expand. And I really do think that if people knew they would care. But they get most of their international news, if they're not from another country or know people from other countries, from the media. So it's a grave threat to national security when news bureaus around the world shut down. Well, let me give you a question that came in from a viewer, if I may, Amy. It's uh, from David Ortega, who's in Mexico, who wrote in saying, in the 15 years I spent in the U.S., I had to make the effort and find information for myself. It was never readily available through the mass media outlets. And that's, that's what made me uh, you know, want to ask you, do you think, I mean, when it comes down to it, Americans can be persuaded to, to take the kind of interest in international news that people in other countries do? Oh, I think there's no question about it, and but it takes something other than a corporate lens to see the rest of the world through, like the fact that we are one community and we have to know each other. And when you have the situation that we have in the United States today, where news bureaus are shutting down, and even when they're not, it's so heavily filtered um, through a kind of political lens, it's a very big problem. And I wonder how you feel that the lack of international coverage in the American media um, is affecting the country's foreign policy. I mean, can the government do what it wants largely because the public has no clue what's going on? This foreign news has the smallest audience and it's the most expensive news to get. And for that reason, uh, the audience part in particular, media companies, with the exception of some elite media, relatively elite media, tend to find it difficult to support foreign news, especially at a time when the old model for news gathering, original news reporting and selling of it uh, has broken down. It's not like this all of a sudden just happened. It's an endemic problem. But, it, but it's surely, if, you know, that in the same way they say about construction, build and they will come. In the same way with America, if they, in Americans, if they realized how important, uh, you know, the country is outside, surely they would also take a, a greater interest in what's, what's going on with the policy. I'm afraid to say that the data show very clearly that the American public generally, generally, is not that interested in foreign news. And we can say we think it's important for them, but by and large, they don't. Now, you can make the argument if they got more of it, they might read it. But you know, the fact is, when you look at what people actually do read, the, there's a reason why networks don't provide as much foreign news as the American news that networks uh, as, as we would like them to. And it's not because they're bad people, it's because of the cost and the, and the audience. Who's policing the U.S., uh, who's policing basically U.S. foreign policy? Who's making sure that, that what's going on outside the, the borders of this country is, is what, I mean, the, the politicians say? I mean, how can people here have an idea that their, that their wishes are being met uh, by those they well, elect? Th that's the key question. Uh, I mean, independent media is essential to the functioning of a democratic society, especially in a time of war. Could you imagine if for just one week we saw the images of war in Iraq and Afghanistan, the babies dead on the ground with the women with their legs blown off by cluster bombs, the soldiers dead and dying? For just one week, I really do think Americans are compassionate people. And they would say, no, war is not the answer to conflict in the 21st century. But they don't see 
And that is the issue. That is the problem. Uh, people can die, both in other countries and U.S. soldiers, because the U.S., uh, the American public is not seeing. You either individuals and countries respond to us the way they do, because we don't even see the effects of our own actions in other countries. Now, Professor, we have a chart we can show our viewers which show uh, a collection of the, the number of minutes uh, of international news coverage uh, that, have, that have been shown by the three main networks in America um, during uh, these, these years uh, that, that are illustrated here between 1988 and about 2009. And we see peaks, uh, you know, at certain areas there. I think 88, 89, we've got the, the change Berlin in... Wall coming Berlin down, Wall yeah, coming right. And then 2003, we've got Iraq, of course. Now, is, is, is it the case that uh, it's, it's, it's take something as extreme as conflict for people to have uh, taken interest uh, into what's going on? Well, you know, the thing about, the, the thing about wars is that, and, and this also explains why it always gets as much coverage as it does, is really a local story. Mm. It's a story about your neighbor's uh, kid or your own kid going to war. Uh, it's a story that becomes tangible and immediate. Uh, and so for reasons of, that's the reason why we get so much uh, war coverage, especially when it's a war we're actually involved in. A couple of questions here from our viewers, if I may put these to you, two of them back to back uh, on a similar theme. The first one's from Eritrea. Uh, Sabah in Asmara writes in saying, a wise man said that war is God's way of teaching Americans geography. Now that America has wars on multiple fronts, soon to add Yemen and Nigeria, is it safer to quiz an American on geography? And the other one came in from the UK from Uzbek Inal, who says, I met an American once and he was talking about Iraq and I asked, where is Iraq? Guess what he said? It's in Africa. That's how the American people know the world they live in. They like junk food the same way they like junk news. I mean, it's you know, obviously a, a bit of a damning uh, uh, commentary from uh, some of our viewers here, but it's pretty bad that many people here don't really have a clue about the rest of the world and where it is. What, I mean, is that fundamentally an educational problem beyond the news itself? Is it something in our schools that needs to be fixed? Oh, I mean, there's no question about it, but I also think the mass media is the way most people get their news and why it's so critical, why we have an absolute obligation as journalists uh, to provide a forum for people to speak for themselves all over the world. I think these are very, very telling comments of your viewers. It makes me think back in World War II, the Secretary of War, Henry Stimson, when they were choosing the sites in Japan to hit with the atomic bombs. Ultimately, they chose Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But he took Kyoto off of the uh, bombing target list because he and his wife had visited there, and he loved it. And I think that's very telling. When people learn about other people, when they hear other stories, when they learn about other countries, it's much more hard to, much more difficult to be belligerent against them. Uh, Americans were liked, which meant that Americans were people that, American journalists were people that other people wanted to talk to and give access to information, which is, of course doesn't exist today. Americans aren't well liked. It makes me want to put a question to you that we got from Mississippi here in the USA from John Parker who wrote in saying the US networks are helping with deliberate the deliberate dumbing down of Americans we as a country know a lot less about the world around us than ever before it's a very sad fact of American culture Americans want their news fast and sugar-coated but in terms of the, the direct dumbing down the, the technology has changed so much in recent years I mean I've witnessed so much just in my lifetime in, in this industry it's been uh, you know it's become instant news it, there's blogging there's the internet what has it done to the next generation of journalists, so to speak, in terms of quality, in terms of um, guaranteeing that the information that's out there is, is, is really uh, quality stuff. Well, on the one hand, people have to be very careful, obviously, about the Internet because it can be a global rumor mill. But something that very important that it's opened up um, is it's challenged the traditional gatekeepers. We are there to challenge, to hold those in power accountable. And there's no more important time than in a time of war because the lies take lives. I think the mainstream media reached an all-time low when it came to the coverage of war in Iraq and Afghanistan. And how, when you look at your students, do you see the passion for journalism that, that you know, for when, from when you were a reporter, for example? Well, you know, it's interesting that uh, at a time when the traditional media seemed to be in disarray, print and broadcast, uh, the numbers of our journalism students has actually increased. So why are they doing that? Well, I think for one thing, they're able to think more creatively about how to get news and present it than old people like me who came up in the traditional way working on newspapers and working for traditional broadcasts. Uh, so I think there's always hope. And the one thing is, although foreign news coverage has historically always been tenuous, the fact is there have always been committed people who are geniuses in news who find ways to bring news to us. We wish there were more, but they're always there and they always will be there.